previous lower limb operation and there is an implant inserted presented with infected implant definition of osteomyelitis include an infection to the bone and the bone marrow due to pyogenic or non-pyogenic organism so that classified the organisms into pyogenic and this is most importantly such as staph aureus and streptococcus non-pyogenic including the tuberculosis or mycobacterium tuberculosis it usually happens in the spine and it's a condition called pots disease the commonest organism of osteomyelitis is a staph aureus and streptococcus so you can classify this in your answer into a gram positive and this includes staph and strept gram negative such as e coli or the enterobacteria, bacteriaceae and uh, e coli klebsiella and salmonella salmonella is specifically common in, in sickle cell anemia patients and other organisms such as anaerobes or fungi and the mycobacterium as well the source of infection it could be multiple sources of hematogenous spread and this happens in patients with bacteremia or direct spread or direct implant it happens from a surrounding abscess to the bone and implant this happens following surgery the common site of infection it depends on the patient age in adults it happens in the vertebrae and in children it usually happens in the metaphysis the pathogenesis of osteomyelitis and this is probably the most important question include multiple stages so it starts by a direct invasion of an organism to the bone and the bone marrow this will result into inflammation Inflammation, by definition, is a vasodilatation of the blood vessels and increasing the intracanalicular pressure here. It will lead to intense pain. If this is a pyogenic organism, it will lead to formation of pus. So operation will also lead to formation of subperiosteal abscess. And this is exactly what produces the significant pain due to increase the intracanalicular pressure. Further increase in the intracanalicular pressure will lead to stays of the blood supply to the organ or the bone. And this will lead to necrosis. So necrosis or death of tissue due to continuous increase in the intracanalicular pressure. At the end, you will have newborn formation. And this is the sequestrum or the involucrum as well. The resolution happens after a few weeks. And if the infection is well controlled by giving antibiotic or surgical management, the intraoseous pressure will start to reduce and the bone will start to heal again if you manage this with good antibiotics. So as you can see, the diagram summarizes it. Invasion of the organism after invasion, acute inflammation. And this is basically vasodilatation and also increasing into the pressure and the intraoseous pressure. And then following that suppuration or post formation, and then you end up by having subperiosteal abscess, the very painful condition. And then you move on to formation of sequestrum and also the cloaca or the opening at the end. And that will be called an involucrum. The pus might burst through the bone. And this is due to significant increase in the intraoseous pressure in addition to formation of the cloaca.